Hi, this is Mary from Open Helix with this week's Tip of the Week. If you're seeing this tip someplace else, please be sure to come back by our blog at blog.openhelix.com for additional details. I'll provide links to the resources I'm talking about today, links to the publications, and so on. So check us out at blog.openhelix.com. For today's tip, I am going to turn to the site that you can see here, Hager, or the Human Aging Genomic Resources site. I came to this because of a recent publication associated with the longevity map, which I'll describe. But there's actually a lot more going on here, and I'll briefly touch on those before I turn to longevity maps specifically. So as you can see, this group is collecting a lot of information about human aging genomic data. The data, though, is not restricted to human, and I'll describe that in, from a couple of different perspectives in some of these other resources that you'll find at their site. And there's other types of information. There's other ways to work with this information here. You can see that, but I'll focus on the ones that are available, the main ones that are available from their landing page on the top here. There's a number of different data sets that have been curated by this team to provide different types of information. So first we'll talk about this Gen Age resource that you can see here. This is gene-centric information that's curated for human aging, but in addition to human, there's model organism data as well. So you can search for the human data or you can search for model organism data. You can do that right from the top here. For any of these data sets, you can search right from the top or you can click to go specifically to the page about the data that's collected here and you can learn more about the goals and how it was done and if there's a publication associated with that they'll provide that information for you as well. Here the aging gene database is not only human but you can search the model organism data as well. I'll return though to the home page and take a look at another data set that's available this GenDR here database of genes associated with dietary restrictions so the DR is dietary restriction so there are a number of different data sets that have been associated with calorie reduction to see if that affects aging. And that kind of data is what you'll find here. And you can search either by gene manipulation or gene expression types of data sets, or you can click again directly to go to the DR, Dietary Restriction Gene Database site, and learn more about their goals and how they've done this and the types of data that's available. And once again, although the site is called a human resource, it's actually got a lot of model organism data. That information is available from another aspect of the, the Hager site. There is also a data set here called An Age, and this is a collection of thousands of species right now that provides details about their aging, longevity, and life history if that kind of information is available. I will click again from the main page here to go specifically over to that collection. Once again, you'll learn more details about their goals and how they're organizing this data if you search from here but I was totally intrigued by the opportunity to look at these species with negligible senescence right here. So I went over to have a look at these species that don't seem to be aging, and I thought that was interesting. And I remembered this story about the 400-year-old quahog and uh, wanted to check that out. So I went over, you can go look at the individual entries for this species, and you can learn more. If there's a, a reference associated with that, you can go to learn more about that from the paper where this was published. And so, yeah, there's this 400-year-old quahog that made the news some time ago, and so I was interested to see the specific record for that. So there's all kinds of species available here, and you can look at their um, maximum longevity if that kind of data is available, and other details about their senescence. I'll go back to the top again now. And as I mentioned, the longevity map was the recent publication that lured me over here, so I wanted to take a look at the details of the human genetic variant data so the focus of this is the variants associated with longevity. At this time, there's 2,000 genes and variants associated with longevity that are featured in this database. Again, you can search from the top, or I recommend clicking the link to go to the landing page that describes this in more details. And you can also search from here, of course, in a couple of different ways. You can search by SNP IDs, or you can search by gene names, uh, gene symbols, and you can also browse. So you could click any of these chromosomes here to look at the information that's available for that. Or if you have details about a, an author, you know, you could search for that in the literature search that's available here. Just to give you an example of the kind of data that's available at the longevity map for these variants, I'm going to click chromosome 10 and all of the genetic associations that have been associated with chromosome 10 are available for you in the list. This might go over several pages if, um, if there are lots of studies associated with that. And there's a couple of different things I should mention here. First of all, 
you can look at um, specific genes or if they're available, but there might be multiple genes in a data set. You can click to go directly to the reference details to the primary study that explored this, but they also curate whether this data was significant or not significant. And they are trying to be inclusive here. They're curating this to contain as much information as possible, and you can go and evaluate the data yourself from the papers and the, the features that you can find here. I'm just going to click the top one, this one that is significant here at the top, just to give you a sample of what the entries will look like. Here again we find this is significant. Details about the population that was studied, a little bit more about the study design, conclusions associated with that. And when there are variants, you will find that there's a SNP ID here, and this would take you over to dbSNP. All you have to do is click on that, and you can learn more about that particular SNP from dbSNP. There are also links to the UCSC Genome Browser. I should mention though, I'm not going to click on this because it loads this whole 10p15 region here, and that can take a long time, so I won't do that on the video. But you can try that out later, and you can look at the genomic neighborhood, what's going on in this region, by clicking this as well. So as you can see here in this publication, there are a bunch of different SNPs that were identified, and you can learn details about any more of those. You can also go to any of these publications that have been curated by this team. This is a really terrific collection of longevity data, not just from humans, but from other species as well. And there's a number of ways to slice this data and look around. So I encourage you to check out the Human Aging Genomic Resources and learn more about the genes and variations associated with aging from this site. Thanks very much for your time.